Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm David Knight. It's Monday, January 18th, 2016. Here are our top stories. Tonight, how will the big banks react to the implosion of oil? Then, a look back at the legacy of Dr. King. After that, why smart cars can be a very dumb idea. And what will it take for Hillary to finally stop the burn? That's next. And I've got all these clips of Bernie Sanders. Climate change is that climate change is absolutely real. Okay? Uh, I know I talk like a Muppet, but it, it's real. Do something now to save the earth. We have to do this now. There's no more these big Walmart people and the oil companies lie all day, but they know the earth is dying. It's not genetic engineering, it's not overfishing, it's not secret weapons that endanger us. It's carbon dioxide plants free. Is that clear? Clean, pure drinking water. You can't survive without it. But where do you get it? Alexa Pure Pro is a brand new groundbreaking gravity-fed water filtration system that is like no other. The Alexa Pure Pro transforms water from virtually any fresh source into clean, healthy drinking water, pairing the unprecedented super filtration power of an all-new gravity block core with a hybrid chromatic shell. It removes up to 99.999% of impurities, including bacteria, viruses, fluoride, disinfectants, volatile organic contaminants and hormones filter capacity up to 5,000 gallons stainless steel construction easy assembly low maintenance replacement filters are simple to install and now as part of an exclusive limited time introductory offer you can save $20 off the retail price and get free shipping this is a limited time offer so order your unit today and receive free shipping and $20 off go to infowarsstore.com or call 888-253-3139 well, we've heard of negative interest rates at the banks, but now we've seen another oddity, and that is negative crude oil prices. Earlier today, we had North Dakota sour crude. And of course, when we talk about sour crude, it's uh, kind of an index. We have things like Brent crude and West Texas intermediate crude. Those are all different kinds of quality of crude oil. Uh, this is a very high sulfur grade of crude, so it's a very low priced oil. You've heard that oil uh, went below $30 a barrel. That's for the higher grades. This lower grade of crude in North Dakota was selling today for negative 50 cents per barrel. Negative 50 cents per barrel. In other words, they'll take it from you if you pay them. They say that U.S. Bench, uh, benchmark oil prices have collapsed more than 70% in the past 18 months. And the higher grades of crude fell below $30 a barrel for the first time in 12 years last week. Telling producers that they have to pay you to take away their oil certainly gives the producers a whole bunch of incentive to shut their wells. In other words, you can have an oil well business if you want, but it'll bankrupt you. Sound familiar? <laughs> of course, this is being done not because of fiat regulation by a president with executive orders. This is really reflective of a global shutdown, slowdown, a recession or a depression, depending on uh, what's going to happen. We don't know, but this is a symptom. It's not really the cause. They talk about it as being the cause, and it will be a cause of other problems. Big banks are bracing for oil loans to implode. This is uh, pointed out by Bloomberg. They say that three of America's biggest banks warned last week that oil prices will continue to create headaches on Wall Street, especially if doomsday scenarios of 20 or even $10 per barrel oil play out. For example, Wells Fargo is setting on more than $17 billion in loans to the oil and gas sector. And so the bank says, well, we're going to set aside $1.2 billion. <laughs> that's less than 10% of their exposure to cover losses. I don't know how that's going to work out. J.P. Morgan, for example, is saying that they're setting aside an extra $124 million to cover potential losses in oil and gas loans. They figure that could rise to $750 million if oil prices unexpectedly stay at their current level for the next year and a half. Citigroup says they're building up reserves up to $300 million. The bank said the move is reflecting a view that oil prices are likely to remain low for a much longer period of time. And as I pointed out, this is a symptom, not a direct cause. And so what they're saying is that they expect the current recession that is reflecting itself in lower stock markets and lower oil prices, they expect that recession 
to continue for quite some time. And understand that today the sanctions came off of Iran. And that means that another half a million barrels of oil per day are going to be coming onto the market that is already glutted into an economy that is already slowed. They point out the oil crash has already caused more than 42 North American oil companies to file for bankruptcy since the beginning of 2015. This is a list compiled by a Houston law firm. Then S&P estimates that 50% of energy junk bonds are distressed meaning that they are about to default. Well, another day, more declines on stock markets. If we look at the Dow, the NASDAQ, and the S&P, they're down from about 2 to 3%. We see that Asian markets were down from about uh, 1 to 1.5%. 1 European markets were down about a quarter to a half a percent. Now, we know that some of this is certainly due to Fed policy. At the very least, uh, the Federal Reserve's policies our tax policies are things that are killing the economy, that are causing these kinds of declines. There's another kind of crash that is coming, though, and this is one that's not going to be on Wall Street. It may be on Main Street with your automobile, and that, of course, is the driverless cars. And it is also another example of how mega corporations are now openly writing regulations, openly writing law here in America and throughout the West. This is a situation where they come, the Silicon Valley uh, car manufacturers, wannabes who want to have the uh, upper hand on self-driving cars, along with Detroit, went to Washington and are now writing the laws. Just as we've seen with GMOs, we've seen that Big Agra does not want to have local regulation of food content or the way that uh, they grow uh, crops with uh, GMO contamination. They don't want to have regulations at the local level, so they want the government to come in at the national or preferably a world government trade operation to shut that down internationally. It's the corporations, of course, that wrote the Trans-Pacific, the Transatlantic Partnerships. They didn't have elected representatives, were not allowed to have any say-so in it. They were not even allowed to tell us if they bothered to even look. And so now we see the same thing happening with transportation. When we talk about gun control, what about car control? What about control of your transportation? What about restricting your movements in a way that they talk about sustainability? That has been the goal of Agenda 21 and of the 2030 sustainable goals that they've come out with just this last September. That is the goal, to confine your movement, to make everybody live in concentrated inner cities in a one or 200 square foot area, and to keep you out of the rural countryside. They want to lock that up. We see the beginnings of that now with the moves towards uh, farmers, ranchers, miners, loggers. They have locked up the areas of the country that they've maintained were for public use. They don't want anybody in there. And of course, they're going to continue to do that to make it impossible for you to own a car make it too expensive for you to commute. A few people will be allowed to do that, those who have a lot of money, those who have political connections. But this is how it's going to roll out. We see that Silicon Valley billionaires are telling the Obama administration what they want. And what they want are $4 billion in federal subsidies. They want a nationalization of transportation safety regulations at the federal level. U.S. Transportation Secretary was surrounded by about a dozen auto and Silicon Valley tech leaders last week at the Detroit Auto Show. They said the U.S. Department of Transportation intends to remove, quote, potential roadblocks to the integration of innovative, transformational automotive, automotive technology that can significantly improve safety, mobility, and sustainability. There's that word, sustainability. And of course, when they talk about safety, what they're really talking about, though, are big subsidies that are going to Silicon Valley as well as Detroit. Think about, for example, airbags. Remember when they put airbags in and they were a safety liability to women, to children, but they wouldn't allow you to turn them off. Now we've had millions of these things recalled. And when they malfunction, it is like being shot in the face with a shotgun, including the metal projectiles, if you've seen any of the people who have been, pictures of people who have been killed by this. Nevertheless, later this year, we're going to have V2V mandates, that's vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communication equipment mandated to be added to cars. That's something you're going to pay to buy, you're going to pay to maintain that, and it is going to be snitching on you everywhere you go. Now, the feds are going to have rules in place for self-driving cars, they say. 
Within the next six months, they're really accelerating this. They say this is an aggressive and ambitious embrace of automotive driving, says an assistant professor at the University of South Carolina. They want to get rid of, as they say, a patchwork of rules. But what kind of rules are they getting rid of? They say this is about safety. And yet the rules that they're reacting to are rules that came out of the California Department of Motor Vehicles, rules that would say that there's going to be requirements for humans to be able to take control of these cars during the testing phase. Wouldn't you think that during the testing phase, at least, that you would want to have humans there to back this up if you were really concerned about safety? But then they talk about the flexibility. Have you ever heard the government talk about flexibility of regulations, especially when it comes to cars? Remember when they wouldn't let people turn off their mandated airbags? But they want to be very flexible when it comes to robotic cars that are going to be ultimately controlled by the government. They say fully autonomous vehicles have the potential to save lives. So we welcome the secretary's commitment to removing barriers that may prevent them from sharing the roads when they're really ready, said a Google spokesman. And they point out, though, that this is in direct con uh, contradiction to the regulations coming out of California, being concerned about safety. Now, if you think that this is going to be a benevolent dictatorship, think about how transportation is already handled when the government interacts with it at the federal level or even at the state level. Think about the TSA when you try to fly or the TSA going onto trains, setting up roadblocks on roads. Think about the fact that we have the highway patrol or local police using their office more for a random tax enforcement than they are for uh, anything else. And understand that this is really about gaining control, about gaining revenue. A proposed law will allow warrantless cell phone searches in Vermont, Bernie Sanders state. You know, how bad could government transportation control be? Well, this is a good example. And in the example they give, they say a highway patrolman sees somebody uh, using their cell phone, so they pull them over. Now, if the person did not acquiesce, then they would have to get a search warrant. So they want to make it easier to hand out those tickets. So lawmakers want Vermonters to give up some of their privacy in exchange for safer roads. Who ever heard that before? Give up your privacy, give up your liberty for safety. Of course, that's part of the what they're trying to sell you with driverless cars in the first place. Somehow you're going to be safer if you just give up all of your freedom to move when you want, how you want, as you wish. Give up your cars, give up your private ownership of cars. Now, they're telling you that what they want you to do is have to turn over your cell phone for a complete audit roadside without a search warrant. They said they haven't really thought about how far this might go. And of course they say, well, you know, it, it could go to uh, other, to your computer, it could go to your iPad, not just your cell phone, but we don't really intend for the police to be able to do that. But of course there's nothing that would prohibit them from doing that. And they point out no other state allows warrantless searches of cell phones. They say it's hard to believe that this won't be found unconstitutional, said someone from the ACLU there in Vermont. They said the bill is vague, it's overbroad. It's also vague when it comes to justification for the stop. A person could just be sneezing or, you know, they could just set up a roadblock like they do for drunk driving. And that's what they talk about. They say anyone who drives on the highway in Vermont is implied to have given consent to take a breathalyzer if the officer suspects him of driving drunk. And now, of course, in many places like here in Austin, they're assuming that you have given your permission to have your blood drawn. It's gotten that bad. Understand that you have rights and that people are giving them away left and right under these phony promises of safety, calling them a privilege. And so that's what they're saying. You have given this up. You have given away your rights to move about freely. And that's what people are doing when they acquiesce to these driverless cars. There's a lot of people who would prefer not to drive. I understand that. And I don't have a problem with that if they would allow us to make that determination ourselves. But understand that they're going to force each and every one of us to buy the equipment to begin with. Then they're going to monitor us with the insurance companies. They're going to tax, track, and insure us to death until we no longer have any private ability to move about. Now, as we look at this and as this expands, and as we see Silicon Valley pushing this driverless car issue, we understand that, of course, their phones themselves have major security issues. As we see many stocks taking a plunge,